Next uh, speaker is, is Norm Branson, uh, who brings a, a great deal of expertise uh, to this topic. Uh, Norm was, was a colleague of mine, and I, I learned a great deal from him. He was uh, Deputy Minister of the Old Environment Department uh, with the province of Manitoba, then he was the Deputy Minister of the Combined Conservation Department, brought together natural resources and, and environment. Uh, and then he was the, uh, the, the Deputy Minister who oversaw the creation uh, of the first Water Stewardship uh, Department. Uh, in Canada, uh, in the province of Manitoba. Uh, he's since retired, uh, He and uh, so he's now unplugged, as it were. Uh, he and Terry Duguid uh, were co-authors several years ago of, uh, of, of one of the, actually the, the most accessible policy documents uh, on, on Lake Winnipeg and, and uh, the possible solutions, uh, and, and subtitled uh, The Sixth Great, great lake. I think after what Minister McIntosh said, you may have to go back and, <laughs> and, uh, and scribble out the, uh, the subtitle. but. Uh, in any case, uh, I think uh, Norm is going to reflect on uh, sort of then and now uh, the, what, what was seen at the time that, uh, that he and Terry Dugan wrote that report and, uh, and what his impressions are of uh, the state of the lake and, and what it will take uh, to, to address its problems now. Thanks, Paul. Uh, before I start, I have uh, three confessions to make. Uh, the first one is, uh, and Paul's already left the cat out of the bag, and this one, I, I'm not Terry Dugan. Uh, he's scheduled to be here, so I'm a humble stand-in for, for Terry. Uh, the second con confession is uh, I'm, I'm going to be speaking quite a bit about a report that, that uh, Paul mentioned, in fact, this report. And, and again, Paul sort of preempted me, uh, but I confess Terry and I wrote it. Uh, so not surprisingly, we think it's a great report, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is a great report. Uh, the, the third confession I have to make is that um, some of what I have to say I think could be interpreted as being critical of government, uh, but it's not intended to be. I, I served uh, government for many years as a, as a senior uh, executive in government. Uh, in fact, I served as Minister McIntosh's government for several years. Um, and I, I fully understand the difficulties of dealing with a wicked problem like, uh, like Winnipeg. Uh, because, of course, Minister McIntosh's government has you know, 99 other wicked problems that are uh, competing for attention as well. And, and in fact, whenever I, I hear former government people criticizing government, particularly in areas they used to work in, the, the question that always sort of pops into my mind is, um, you know, if you're so smart, why didn't you solve the problem when you were in government? So with those uh, uh, caveats, then, um, I'm going to talk about Lake Winnipeg through the medium of, of this report that was done in uh, November of 2005 for the governments of Canada and Manitoba, and uh, give us some perspective on how we saw the lake and how we saw the challenges of the lake in 2005. And then I'm going to contrast that with where we are today. And in a sense, well, what's happened in the meanwhile? What have we done between 2005 and 2014 with respect to Lake Winnipeg? Now, back in 2005, the provincial and federal governments commissioned a two-person uh, Lake Winnipeg Implementation Committee, they called it. And, and that was Terry Dugan and myself. Uh, and basically, we were to report to the two governments on ways that they could better cooperate together to deal with the emerging problems on Lake Winnipeg. Now, the, the resultant report documented what we knew at the time about Lake Winnipeg, the, the state of the science, so to speak. Um, it, it was really the first kind of distillation of, of all of this knowledge in a single document. And bringing that knowledge together, we were able to draw a number of conclusions. And, and in fact, we put together 22 recommendations that we grouped into four categories. We talked about intergovernmental cooperation, which was our, our main mandate, uh, science, education and public uh, education, and, and integration, kind of bringing all these diverse interests around this huge watershed uh, into some coherent um, whole. Uh, not surprisingly, of course, the, the report concluded that the, the lake was the health of the lake was seriously compromised. And although the Lake uh, Winnipeg Research Consortium, which I'm sure most, if not all of you, have heard about, was doing good work, 
there was still a great deal more science required to understand what was happening on the lake and, and what to do about it. What we did know at that time was that the nutrient inflows had increased dramatically in recent years into Lake Winnipeg. And they, these were causing massive algal blooms in both the north and south basins of the lake. We also knew that the majority of these nutrients originated in the Red River watershed. And that more than half of these, in fact, came from the United States. We also knew that the sources were essentially municipal and agricultural. Natural as well, by the way, it comes from about a third of the input into the lake. And that the problem was getting worse. It was also evident that the, the Manitoba public was aware of the problem in a general sense, but they really weren't engaged, at least not to the point of pressing their government to take urgent action. The huge size of the drainage basin and, and the fact that more than half the nutrients originated outside Manitoba meant that governments and organizations from all four provinces and at least two states had to be engaged. Looking at what was done to date on the Eastern Great Lakes, and I'm speaking to date being 2005, it was clear that solving the problems on Lake Winnipeg was not going to be cheap. And although some local groups were starting to publicize the plight of the lake, really a full port court press was required to better educate the public about the lake's woes, because at that time we considered the situation urgent. Under each of the four broad categories, here's an overview of, of what we recommended. First, a formal federal-provincial agreement substantially funded to underwrite science, public education and involvement, government operations, and interjurisdictional cooperation. And that the inclusion of all government departments and agencies with an interest in Lake Winnipeg and public accountability be features of such an agreement. And, and in fact, we included a draft agreement in the report. Uh, second, increased funding and better coordination and integration of science, including endowing the research infrastructure required for research on the lake. And of course, addressing outstanding science issues on a priority basis. Now, I'll talk a bit more about where we are with some of those priority issues today. Third, resources and institutional support for public education, including a transparent annual accounting on the state of the lake. And finally, a healthy Lake Winnipeg Charter to serve as an umbrella for water interests throughout the basin with common objectives to improve the health of Lake Winnipeg. And we included a draft of that charter in the report as well. The committee's report was acknowledged by the two governments but I would say never formally acted upon and, and there's some reasons for that and, and uh, I'll say candidly they were probably good reasons at the time. Timing is everything as they say and uh, uh, the timing of our report uh, wasn't felicitous. Uh, the authors of the report, Terry and I, we, we held uh, two follow-up workshops in which we brought together interest from all over the base, not just Manitoba, but uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, uh, North and South Dakota, Montana, and Minnesota. What we found, and we were surprised by this actually, that there was a tremendous interest in Lake Winnipeg outside of Manitoba. Uh, and, and I think Minister McIntosh uh, touched on, on this angle that, uh, in a sense, uh, Lake Winnipeg was sort of the miner's canary for, for people. Um, but they were concerned themselves with eutrophication in their own jurisdictions and, and realized that they had to be doing and were doing some things to deal with nutrient enrichment in their own jurisdictions. And, and they in turn saw that link to Lake Winnipeg and, and what some of their actions locally could do to benefit Lake Winnipeg. Unfortunately, at that time, and, and I mean, Terry and I were volunteers doing this off the corners of our desk, and, and this idea really didn't have a champion, uh, somebody with resources that could follow it up, and unfortunately, at that time, the Lake Winnipeg Charter uh, kind of fell by the wayside. The idea, in fact, uh, didn't catch hold at that time. Uh, 
So uh, what, what's been happening since 2005? And I'll, I'll speak initially in, in terms of those four categories that we identified in our report. In the area of federal-provincial cooperation, I think an awful lot's been accomplished. The two good governments now do have a formal cooperation agreement, albeit I, I'd say it's not quite as inclusive as the agreement that we had uh, drafted in our report. I told you we loved our report. <laughs> um, and and um, we also um, uh, uh, recommended a level of funding, and, and I'd have to say as well, funding uh, on behalf of the two governments again is, is greatly improved. A lot of money has gone in, both from the federal and provincial governments uh, into Lake Winnipeg and Lake Winnipeg activities. Although again, not quite up to the bar we set in, in 2005. Although the International Joint Commission is not formally involved through the Boundary Waters Treaty, in spite of the fact that nutrient inflows from the U.S. are an ongoing violation of that treaty, Commission staff have been involved in the technical analysis of nutrient inflows to the lake, and, and that's a, a definite plus. Manitoba did mount a valiant effort to address those areas of agro-Manitoba with a high potential for nutrient runoff. In fact, that, that activity was started, I think, before I left government. I'd have to say so far it hasn't borne much fruit in, in my view, but it certainly it started in the right direction. Uh, although, the, you know, apparently we still have some technical differences on, on them between the two governments on the importance of phosphorus and nitrogen as, as kind of the trigger nutrients on Lake Winnipeg. And, and that's a bit disappointing, actually, after some nine years of, of uh, kind of batting this issue back and forth. And on a very negative side, unfortunately, the city of Winnipeg has been allowed to once again postpone certain nutrient removal improvements to its treatment works. In the area of science, the Lake Winnipeg Research Consortium continues to do good work, although the funding levels really remain minuscule when you compare them to the level of effort that has been and is continuing to be mounted on the eastern Great Lakes. The science results are really not widely disseminated to the general public. Um, the most recent State of the Lake report is dated, I believe, 2007. And the consortium itself uh, has, has done a lot of sort of soul searching of, of their own work and, and they've concluded that there continue to be some deficiencies in coordination that there's a lack of a comprehensive government science program and I think that's directed actually at the, the federal government the, the province really isn't and, and probably ought not to be in the peer research game very heavily uh, the consortium has pointed out several specific issues like uh, algal toxins, for example, uh, that require a priority effort and more effort. Uh, they pointed out there's a lack of knowledge and research on the fishery in Lake Winnipeg. Uh, and there's a need to plan for research on emerging issues like uh, endocrine uh, disruptors. Concerning public education, again, there's a lot of positives to report. Uh, many groups are actively engaged in public education and outreach about Lake Winnipeg. Lake Winnipeg Foundation is an example, but there, there are many other good examples. Uh, I think until recently their efforts weren't very well coordinated, but uh, I think that's looking up since the signing of the Lake Friendly Accord. I think one of the goals of the Accord is to provide an umbrella for uh, all sorts of groups, including those that are spreading the word about Lake Winnipeg and involved in the, in the public education business. Uh, I think there's been a, a hesitancy of the um, scientific community to speak up forcefully on Lake Winnipeg. Um, as, as I'm sure you're all aware, the, the science community has been under some pressure in recent years from governments. Um, I think this, this hesitancy to speak out forcefully um, has, uh, in a sense, hurt the, the efforts at public education and public awareness about the urgency of the issues on Lake Winnipeg. And frankly, so far, nobody's throwing a lot of money into disseminating information about Lake Winnipeg. I mean, I was really pleased to see the material that, that Minister McIntosh is, uh, is, is going to be uh, 
trotting around to our neighbors. I think that's that's very important. And I'll talk a bit about that in terms of getting our own house in order. Regarding in integration, of course, that, that's I think what the Lake Friendly Accord is all about, signed by the, the governments of Canada and Manitoba. It's intended to recruit stakeholders from all parts of the Lake Winnipeg Basin, and, and it's a great step forward. Uh, there's a strong interest in, in Lake Winnipeg outside the uh, borders of Manitoba, as I pointed out before, and as we found from the, the two workshops that we put on subsequent to, to filing our report. And in fact, many of the groups that hopefully will be involved in the Lake Friendly Accord are themselves successful models of watershed management. Uh, for example, the Lake, uh, Lake of the Woods Water Sustainability Foundation is is a good example, but there are a lot of others that are active on the Saskatchewan River, the Bull River in Alberta, there are a number of these groups. I think it remains an outstanding omission that our governments are not pursuing a reference under the Boundary Waters Treaty respecting transboundary nutrient flows. The expectation is that an international joint commission uh, report could provide very useful advice on how the two national governments might improve nutrient management in the Red River Basin to the benefit of Lake Winnipeg. So where does that leave us in 2014 versus 2005? Well, our science is better. Uh, we certainly now have a deeper understanding of the processes at work on the lake. But we still lag way behind the level of effort benchmarked by the Eastern Great Lakes. There's greater public awareness but still not really enough active engagement. Government funding and cooperation has certainly much improved, but the level of effort recommended in 2005 has still not been reached nine years later. The province has taken some commendable regulatory initiatives, but implementing some of these measures, most notably nutrient removal in Winnipeg, has been delayed. Uh, the Lake Friendly Accord certainly marks a good start at integrating actions throughout the basin. And again, it was recommended nine years ago. The International Institute for Sustainable Development is promoting a long-term solution involving the harvesting of nutrients. And again, it's a, a fantastic step forward looking well into the future. But this shouldn't divert attention from the need for immediate action. I think ultimately you only need to know four things about Lake Winnipeg. First three things you need to know are, first of all, that more than half the nutrients entering the lake originate outside of Manitoba. Second thing you need to know is that the vast percentage of those nutrients originate in the Red River Valley. And thirdly, that almost two-thirds of those nutrients originate south of the border. Now these facts lead, at least lead me, to two inescapable conclusions. First conclusion is we have to put our own house in order first. No jurisdiction is going to do anything to help us unless and until we implement strong nutrient management policies here. And I think again, Mr. McIntosh referenced that and referenced the, the acknowledgement that that's what we're going to have to do and that's what we're beginning to do. And secondly, we have to renew our commitment to the Boundary Waters Treaty abandoned in our zeal to be nice guys on Devil's Lake. An IJC Lake Winnipeg reference could produce sound, practical advice that would be listened to by national, state, and provincial governments. The fourth fact is that there are no actions underway that will result in a significant reduction in the nutrients entering the lake. And I know some people will dispute that, but I certainly believe that to be the case and I think there's good evidence to support that. In fact, and, and again, there's some difference of opinion on this. Um, we've had a, a, as Minister McIntosh mentioned, a, a, a leveling of phosphorus in a, in a particular period. Uh, I have not seen any indications that's as a result of somehow reducing the available inputs of phosphorus on the landscape. Uh, there may be many reasons for it. The sense is, and if you look at the long-term trajectory over a number of years, the, the trend is upward, and is likely to continue to up, uh, continue to trend upward. And I think this leads to a third inescapable conclusion, and that's that the health of the lake is going to continue to deteriorate. 
and that a crisis point will be reached, and probably quite soon. Now, uh, all of what I've said is, is not in any way attempting to belittle what has been and what is being done, because much has been accomplished since 2005. But the point is we're moving rather slowly. And, and I don't throw my hands up in despair. I believe we can turn this situation around. And, and there are many actions that are directed to doing just that. However, I don't think we have a lot of time. I think we need a much greater sense of urgency than has prevailed up to now. Thank you.